There's one more detail I need to talk about with pipe flow. And um, I have two questions for you. First, why are water pipes circular? And then why are air ducts typically rectangular? Now the first one you probably all can answer. So why do we use circular pipes? Um, there's really two reasons. One is it withstands pressure really well. If you had just a square pipe, um, it would tend to break at the corners. Uh, and the second reason is it's, it's an efficient design. You get a maximum amount of cross-sectional area with a minimum amount of materials. So that's why we use circular water pipes. But why would air ducts be rectangular then? Um, this is a pretty simple answer actually, just because it's convenient. Um, we put these air ducts in wall cavities and the, the space between floors and ceilings. And to maximize our surface area in that space, a rectangle usually works better. And we don't have pressure worries because pressures are very low in these air systems. Okay, so all the tools we've used up till now for pipe flow, we can use for rectangular pipes, just like the circular pipes. But the one thing we need to do differently or we need to know is um, what to use for diameter. There is no diameter for a rectangular pipe. So we define something called a hydraulic diameter and it's four times the area divided by the perimeter. So that's the cross-sectional area divided by that cross-sectional perimeter. And this is in the FE handbook. And then all of those equations we use for head loss and Reynolds number and relative roughness we just need to substitute in the hydraulic diameter for diameter, wherever that appears. In laminar flow, we talked about the friction factor being exactly equal to 64 over the Reynolds number. Remember, we don't have to use the Moody diagram. We can just use this equation directly. That 64 is specific for a circular pipe. If you have a rectangular pipe, or um, there's even an annulus pipe shown here in the figure, you can use a different you use a different value for that constant to calculate what the friction factor is under laminar flow conditions. All right, so that's about it. There's really not much new here. It's just that hydraulic diameter. We're going to do an example of airflow through 500 feet of a one by one and a half rectangular wooden duct, and it's got a certain roughness. By the way, these wooden ducts, this was often done in old buildings. Um, you would just use the space between the two by eights and the rafters to transmit airflow. So there, there wouldn't be a duct per se. You would just use that cavity in the, in the ceiling. So anyway, um, we have a four, you're also given a roughness and flow rate. I want you to find the head loss and the pressure drop. And then let's say we wanted to eliminate that pressure drop. How much power would have to go to a fan to, uh, to, to stop that pressure drop. Okay, since we're solving for head loss directly, we can use the darcy weisbeck equation directly. We need velocity. I gave you flow rate, so it's just flow rate divided by area. Area for a rectangle is obviously length times width. And we can solve for our hydraulic diameter. It's four times the area divided by the perimeter. And then with that, we can calculate a Reynolds number and a relative roughness. We can take those two terms and go to our Moody diagram to get our friction factor. So we've got our relative roughness and our Reynolds number. We pick a type curve based on the relative roughness. We read up from the Reynolds number, read across. That gives us a friction factor of 0 0.022, it looks like to me. Okay, we plug that into Darcy Weisbeck and we get a head loss of 440 feet. Um, second question was find the pressure drop. Now we need to use the energy equation since we're talking about pressure. We're going to pick two points um, at the beginning and the end of this duct. Since it's constant cross-sectional area, the um, velocities have to be the same. Again, we're applying conservation of mass there. Um, it's horizontal, so those cancel out, and in this case there's no pump or fan or turbine or whatever. And we're left with the simple equation of the pressure drop is equal to gamma times the head loss, and that's easy enough to solve. And then finally, if we were going to 
use a fan here to eliminate that pressure drop. Let's go back to the energy equation. Um, same assumptions, the velocities are the same, so they cancel out. The elevations are the same, or they're set to zero, so they drop out. Now we're going to have a pump head here because we have a fan, but we're doing it such that the pressure difference is zero. So these pressures are going to cancel out. So all we're left with is the pump head equals the head loss. We know what the head loss is already. It's 440 feet, so we don't have to resolve for that. Um, we put in our pump equation and solve for the power. Note that I'm assuming an efficiency of one. Uh, the question didn't give us any information on efficiency, so I just set that equal to one. And we can solve for the power, and that's 5.11 horsepower.